How big do you think the largest aircraft in history is? OK, we know you've not thought of this question before, but now's your time. Think of the largest airplane in human history and tell us what comes to your mind. Is it one of the Boeings? Or do you have another aircraft in mind? Well, if you didn't think of the Strato launch, you may be off the mark. This behemoth is the largest aircraft in the world by wingspan, and today on Super Freaky Science, we will be telling you all about it. The Aircraft First off, the official name of this plane isn't the Strato Launch. Instead, the plane goes by the scaled composite model 351 Strato Launch. The name was shortened to Strato Launch because, seriously, who wants to say scaled composite model 351 Strato Launch every time they try to refer to the plane? No one. That's who. Unlike regular airplanes, the Strato Launch wasn't developed to carry cargo or passengers. The plane was developed with only one intention in mind. It was essentially built to launch spacecraft. Yes, spacecrafts. If you didn't know, there are these things called air launch to orbit rockets. We know that rockets are usually launched from a launch pad on the ground to the sky. When they're not, they go through a launching method called air to launch. In this method, the rocket is strapped to a conventional horizontal takeoff aircraft and is then launched directly from the aircraft. You probably think that this sounds so complex and would take an unholy amount of calculations to get right. And you're correct. Engineers have to figure out if the plane would be able to carry the rocket, whether the rocket would be able to launch from the plane, whether the conditions in the atmosphere would be fit for the launch, and most importantly, the right moment for the rocket to be released from the plane. This is important if the rocket is to have any hope of getting its trajectory right. Thankfully, we have years and years and years of experience with this kind of launch off. We've been experimenting with air-to-air -air launching for about 70 years, and for the most part, we got it right. However, there are some pretty huge limitations. For example, the size of the rocket you can launch from the aircraft is pretty much limited to the size of the plane. Planes can only carry so much cargo, and once a rocket gets bigger than the weight the plane can carry, it becomes impossible for the rocket to be launched. There are two solutions to this problem, of course. The first solution, and the easiest one, is to reduce the size of the rocket. It would be difficult, but engineers can remove all but the most important payload from the rocket. Once it's small enough for the plane to carry, the mission will be good to go. The second solution is way more expensive, of course, and it has to do with increasing the size of the plane. That's the solution that gave birth to the Strato launch. The plane was supposed to be the biggest plane that would be able to lift at least most medium-sized rockets and let them launch from the sky. It's a little wonder that the plane is intended to carry a 550,000 pound payload and has 1.3 million pound maximum takeoff weight. History The project of building the Strato launch was kicked off when Dynetech, an American applied science and information technology company, started working on it in early 2011. In December of that year, there was a public announcement telling the world that the Strato launch was in the early stages of development. The Strato launch was originally to help launch the Falcon 9 Air by SpaceX, and that consideration dictated the eventual size of the Strato launch. Sadly, SpaceX departed a year later, but that didn't daunt Strato launch one bit. They'd bit on an engineering bone, and they were not willing to let it go soon. In August of 2013, the Pegasus 2 was selected for the air launch vehicle, and by 2015, 200,000 pounds of structure was assembled. By June 2016, about 300 people were working on the project. However, by October, the Pegasus was replaced because it didn't meet the economic costs and revenue targets of the company. Its replacements were multiple Pegasus XL mounted underneath the aircraft. Design 
The aircraft, as you can see, features a twin fuselage design, which is strange, but isn't novel. That's right, the twin fuselage design, or at least the concept of it, has been around since at least World War II. 75 years ago, engineers were already building aircrafts that had two fuselages. However, they soon found out that planes like that had little practical use or advantages and were significantly more expensive to build. So the idea was eventually retired. Recently, the idea has garnered more interest from engineers of, of its potential use in air-to-air -air launches. The reason, of course, is simple. It offers the advantage of a clean payload area underneath the wing centre section. Since engineers have found this useful for design, a few planes with the design have been built. Some of them include the Control Vertus and Twin Fuselage Lockheed C-5 Galaxy Shuttle Transport aircraft of 1974. However, what makes the Strata launch very different from all its predecessors is the fact that it has the longest wingspan ever flown, and that's no mean feat. The plane has a wingspan of about 117 metres, or about 385 feet. Did, do you know how big that is? OK, let's give you a rough idea. It's larger than an American football field. By 85 feet! The closest plane to this gigantic structure of a plane is the huge H-4 Hercules flying boat with a 321 feet wingspan. But you must be having further questions. For one, how many pilots will there be since it seems like there are two cockpits? Well, there's only going to be one. The pilot, co-pilot and flight engineering are accommodated in the right fuselage cockpit. However, the flight data systems will be in the left fuselage cockpit. The left fuselage cockpit is unmanned and has storage space for about £2,500 of mission-specific equipment. Both fuselage cockpits are pressurised and separated by a composite pressure bulkhead from the remainder of the unpressurised vehicle. Testing by May 1, 2017, Stratolaunch had already spent hundreds of millions on the project. On May 31st, the aircraft was finally rolled out to the world to see. It was going to go through fueling tests, taxi tests, engine tests, and would ultimately be prepared for ground testing. If all these tests went well, the Stratolaunch would then take to the skies in a test flight. The company was so confident of the plane that they said it would be ready for a 2019 first launch. By the beginning of 2019, Stratolaunch had completed all its tests and had passed. However, in late 2018, Paul Allen, Stratolaunch's founder, died. And that's when things started spiralling out of control. First off, Stratolaunch abandoned the development of the PGA rocket engine and dedicated launchers. However, before things got out of hand, the aircraft was able to take to the air for the first time on April 3rd, 2019. On its first flight, it was able to reach about 17,000 feet and about 305 kilometers an hour in a two-hour flight. Program Halt After the death of Paul Allen, the money for Strato Launch dried up. Very soon, there were speculations that the company in its entirety would cease operations. Allen had been the source of most of the company's development programs, and his death meant that the company wouldn't be able to spend as much money again. Sadly, the speculations concerning the end of the company and its flight program came to pass. On the 31st of May 2019, the company announced that it would cease operation and that the sales of its asset were being explored. There was an asking price of about $400 million. This could cover the sole aircraft, the company facilities, equipment, design and other intellectual properties that belong to the company. By the 11th of October, the company had announced that it had been sold and had a new owner. Since its first flight, the Strata launch hasn't taken to the skies again, and no one knows whether it will take to the skies ever again. However, it remains one of the largest aircraft that has ever been built, and it is an engineering marvel whether it flies again or not. That's it guys, if you liked this video make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons, goodbye for now, stay safe and goodbye.